and this is my video on networking media. My name is Alan Irwin. I'm currently a student at Western Michigan University. Uh, this video will be covering the physical media used for connect making networks, um, such as Ethernet cables, wireless, that stuff. So if you're looking for standards such as topologies or IPv4 or anything like that, look elsewhere. To start off, there are two types of physical media. We have guided and unguided. The unguided physical media is anything wireless, um, so cellular, Wi-Fi, that stuff. Guided physical media is everything else, anything that um, connects your computer to another computer with some type of cable. Um, I'll only be discussing coaxial twisted pair and fiber optics because as far as I know those are the only kinds still in production. A uh, bit of terminology. Uh, whenever I refer to transceivers or terminators, I am referring to the transmitter slash receiver. Um, these are the cable enders. Uh, terminator, the end of the cable. You know, it could be a male, it could be a female. Uh, some examples we have the AUI, which is um, looks almost like serial. It's uh, this one right here. The uh, fiber optics use these. There's also um, RJ45, which is used for twisted pairs or Ethernet cables, as you may know them. These are what you commonly see connecting computers. And, um, yeah. So I'm going to start with guided physical media. It's the coaxial, the twisted pair, and the fiber optics. The coaxial cable is old. It's um, kind of it's where networking started. Uh, it uses essentially two pieces of copper. One's going to be ground. One's going to be live, and it's going to be broadcasting an AC signal both ways. And it uses this signal to transmit data. A the problem with this is that it can only handle one signal at a time, so if anyone else uses the same cable, then they have to say, they have to tell the other devices to stop broadcasting on that cable in order for, and then it can broadcast its signal and resolve its transaction of data and whatever. Um, it, it's growing old, it's getting old fashioned. But this is probably what's built into your home. If your home is old, is was made sometime prior to 2000 or 1990, you probably have some coaxial cable running through your walls, and that is going to be a limiting factor in how fast your internet connection can be. And I'll cover that in a few slides. We have some classifications for coaxial cable. Um, Radio guide specification is what they're called, and that dates back to 1940s radio broadcasting stuff. But they use it for this because it uses the same oscillating principle. A maximum speed you can get is um, ranges from 10 to 10 megabyte, megabits per second, and that's insanely slow compared to Ethernet and fiber optic. So when I say that this is the limiter in your home as to how fast your internet can be, that, that's what I'm talking about. It's 100 megabits per second at best. The two standards that we really have, because they have different RGA 8, 11, 58, but the, that's just all in how conduct in um, the current running through the cable. Uh, the actual difference is going to be in thick net or thin net. The thick net can go a longer distance, but it's a lot more rigid. It uses thicker cabling, so it's harder to move, but it is going to have a more stable signal. The thin net is going to be thinner, it's going to be more flexible, but it can only go so far. And it's 185 meters, and you might round that down off to 200 meters, but you shouldn't because those last 15 meters can make a huge difference. Um, the difference being that within those last 15 meters you could lose signal stability and data that you try to connect will just fail. So then you have to replace it with two cables and there goes one whole cable that you just wasted your time and money on. Uh, 
Um, I mentioned earlier that multiple people would be sharing the same cable. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, the coaxial cable vampire tap is what it was called. Um, basically because it would just bite into the cable and inject a needle and this is the device that would broadcast to other vampire tops to stop so that it could handle this transaction and then it would tell the other ones to turn back on. Uh, this was known as bus topology, but as I said, I'm not going to cover topologies outside of the scope of this presentation, so you'll have to look elsewhere for that information. Um, but you can also do this to any cable out there just to intercept traffic, if you like. Um, the terminator for this is the BNC. Uh, it a lot of people know it as a British Naval Connector, but it's actually the Bayonet Neil Con Councilman Connector. No one calls it that. They just call it BNC or British Naval Connector. Probably because it looks somewhat like a naval. Moving on to twisted pair cables, the they are extremely common. Um, you'll see them everywhere because your computer can connect directly to it and internal networks will be based on these. Uh, when I say internal networks, I mean within uh, buildings or campuses. The cape, the twisted pair um, means that it, there it are at least, or there are an even number of cables within this wire and every, and there's, every pair are wrapped around each other. The pairing causes a, them to cancel out some electromagnetic interference. This is interference that affects coaxial cables. Um, things like microwave signals and um, basic radio wave signals and other electronic devices can interfere with the um, stability of the signal transmitted along that cable. So the twisting causes it to cancel out some of that interference. Um, We'll cover that in a little bit more detail later. But you should know that there are two types at this point. There's a shielded and unshielded. The shielded does not make a huge difference. It's going to offer a little more protection, and you'll really only notice it if you're, say, wrapping your Ethernet cable around a microwave before it gets to your computer. Uh, that kind of thing would interrupt an unshielded, but shielded would deal with it better. You would still have some stability issues, but you would get more signals through. Uh, there are very, we have had multiple categories. Um, cats one, two, and or yeah, cats one and two are used for telephone systems. Uh, you pro if you have a phone in your home, it's probably using cat one or two. Cat three and onward, they were all used for actual networking between computers. Cat three is no longer in use. If you still find cat three, throw it out, replace it with something else because there's no point. Um, cat four should be replaced with cat five. Cat I mean, you can keep it. You're in, at home. You're probably not going to need one gigabit per second. But if you do, you need Cat 5e. And then from Cat 5e, we go to Cat 6. The only real difference between these um, is the quality of the material and the number of twists per inch. The um, Cat6 itself, the material though, is so fine that if you crimp it yourself, you're basically just crimping a Cat5e. So you need a machine to do it properly, otherwise you're going to lose that 10 gigabits per second. It's going to drop drastically. Uh, when I say crimping, here's the process. We have this device here. It's this little tool. You might have seen one before, maybe not. You take one of those RJ45 connectors that you saw at the end of the Ethernet cable and you run the you place the wires into it and then you place the terminator into your crimper you um, apply pressure it comes down um, it holds the cables in place and drives some metal pins into the cables and you've crimped your cable um, side note cat one uses rj11 it's that little four pin one um, just about everything else uses RJ45, which has eight pins. If you want to wiretap the way you like, you I showed you how to wiretap into coaxial. 
there are two ways you could split the cable with a device similar to this. So you would connect this end into your computer and these two ends would just carry the signal along. So you need, you would need to uh, recrimp re the ends. Alternatively, you can do this, which the users of the cable won't even notice unless they actually inspect the cable itself. Um, what you do is you, you basically make a drop for the green cabling and the orange cabling, connect your computer into it, run some packet sniffing tool like Wireshark, and you can intercept traffic. Um, for more details, here's a link. Now, fiber optic is getting increasingly popular for replacing coaxial, which is a good thing because it is much faster uh, and it can go much farther in a single strand. A huge difference is that the coaxial uses uh, alternating current electricity. The fiber optic uses light, and a light can be transmitted in multiple wavelengths at once instead of just needing one electrical signal. So that's going to play in a little bit. I'll discuss that a little bit more in a few slides. But the cable itself is usually going to be a bun is going to have a bundle of plastic cylinders, and these plastic cylinders are going to be wrapped in a reflective cladding. This cladding makes sure that the light does not escape. Um, each core is usually going to be pla glass or plastic, depends on the maker. So, huge difference between two different between the types of fiber optic is uh, their single mode and multi mode. The multi mode is sending along multiple wavelengths because you could have different colors, for example, like uh, red or green or blue or yellow. Those could all be broadcasted on the same cable and you would have signals coming and going both ways, so that's a lot of data being handled all at once. And because it, light travels a lot faster than electricity, you're also having that playing into making a stronger connection. Um, so you might remember that the uh, max speed for coaxial was 1 megabit per second. The max speed for multimode fiber optic is 10 gigabits per second. Huge difference. It's a difference of 1,000. The um, Another difference is the distance. The um, co thick net coaxial could go 500 meters, whereas the multimode coax, or where single mode fiber optic can go 60 kilometers. It's 40 miles. It's, um, a lot faster, a lot farther, and in some instances it's a lot cheaper than going with coaxial. So there really is, in the going on in the future, no reason to make a structure dependent on coaxial cabling for the network, or for the backbone of the network. Um, the only problem with fiber optic is that it's a lot harder to terminate because you have to account for the fact that it's light. If you do it slightly wrong, then the light's not going to be received correctly, and you've just lost signal. So you have to be careful with that. Um, one, of, one of the tricks with fiber optic, though, is that you have to convert electric, electrical signal at, say, your modem to light, and then at the end you have to convert it back to electrical. There are two com two ways of doing this. You can use an ILD, which is going to be able to send and receive signals, or you can use an L a um, single, a, a unidirectional fiber optic cable, which is going to mean it's going to have a bulb at one end that's sending the, sending the light, and then you have a diode at the end that's receiving the light. And it's only going to go one direction. Um, a huge thing about fiber optic, though, for years has been, it has been that it's been advertised as very secure, you can't tap into it, and that's not true. The truth is that you can very easily tap into a fiber optic cable. You only have to bend it in order to stress the cladding, which will cause some of the light, but not enough to actually interrupt the signal to escape. And then what you can do is you can use another device to interrupt, like a photodiode, to receive that light and interpret that into electrical signals. And there you go. You've just you've just received what someone else was trying to send over the fiber optic cable. And it will still 
completely sent. Other people, like their transaction will complete. You're just receiving copies. Um, if you want more information, here's a link. This, this was actually discovered at the, or shortly after fiber optic was invented, but it's been kept confidential for security reasons. But at this, for whatever reason, they decided to declassify it. So this is me wrapping up the guided media portion of this presentation. The coaxial thin net, coaxial thick net, you can see the difference there, it's just the distance. But in comparison to fiber optic and even twisted pair, you can see why we would want to move on to fiber optic. The twisted pair is going to be useful for um, internal networks still, even with fiber optic, because it will still be cheaper than fiber optic. And it's also easier to crimp. It's easier to work with in a network, and you just get the same speed. And in internal networking, you're not not really going to want to um, to use a lot of complex cabling because you often find that if a cable goes bad, you have to re replace it. And generally, these cables are in places where you get a lot of dust and um, interference, and maybe even people tripping over it or stepping on it. Moving on to unguided physical media, and this is going to be very brief. Um, we have Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is going uses uh, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, which is the microwave frequency. And the reason that doesn't fry people is because of power. If you wanted to try and cook a turkey with a with your wireless router, you would need about 500 of them and you would need to have their antennas angled correctly and you might even want to surround it in tin foil so that the signals are bounced back and amplified. The orthogonal frequency mul division multiplexing that's just what OFDM means. If you want to look into that, feel free. That's just a um, complex term. Um, the distance that you can get with your wireless varies. It is very possible to get 50 kilometers and you might recall that the 60 kilometers for the fiber optic was somewhere near 40 miles. So 50 kilometers, almost 40 miles, you can get a really good signal with that. So if you are having signal strength with your, um, with your wireless router, you might want to look into replacing the antenna. You can also see that we've had various standards throughout the years, and oh, they've just been increasing in um, uh, in uh, speed. For cellular, I'm um, just going to put this in terms of 3G, 4G, 5G, and the G stands for generation. It's really kind of silly if you think about it. We just call this five generation. Um, 5G, 5G is currently in development, but it's been reported to have an uplink and downlink of 10 gigabits per second, which is a huge increase from 4G. It makes it as good as fiber optic, and it might make fiber optic cabling pointless if we can actually get that in development and working for the whole planet. Here's a simple spectrum chart just to give you a sense of scale. Your, let's see, your mobile phones right here and your wireless data right here right next to the microwave. Um, then now if you go over a little bit you'll see You've got your infrared, and then here's your visible spectrum. And this whole spectrum is what your fiber optic cabling is based on. And that wraps up my presentation on physical media for networking. Um, as any, uh, any links I use for this research will be provided in the note for this video. Thank you.